We're here for a review hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Tamara Martinez is my permanency specialist. We are present ready. Wade Bird on behalf of the the Owls. We are present ready, Your Honor. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Jasmine. Okay, and Ms. Flores is logged in. I don't have video with her, Ms. Flores. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, and I will watch for Ms. Christie. <clears throat> Okay, then what do we have new since the court report was filed? There haven't been really any changes since the court report was filed. Um, Jasmine continues to do well in her placement. She's making progress with her therapies. Um, she's a very happy, fun little girl. Um, Ms. Flores continues to um, go down to, the, to Dallas um, about once a month to attend Jasmine's therapies. And if she has a doctor's appointment, um, she'll attend that. She's um, slowly trying to learn about Jasmine's needs and what it, the extent that it's going to require to take care of her. Um, but it's been a process and um, she's continuing to learn about that. And then in regards to Mr. Diaz, he's still incarcerated and has not replied to any letters. All right. Um, she's still seeing about the same number of uh, specialists as she has been? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, his mother worked all the services that we wanted her to work? Yes, ma'am. She's completed her services. She's um, complied with probation. She's providing negative drug screens. Our just concern at this moment is her being able to meet Jasmine's needs. I understand. <clears throat> All right, uh, Ms. Flores, is there anything that you want to talk about today? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Bird. Nothing for us, Okay, and Ms. Zavala. Your Honor, Jasmine continues to thrive in her current placement, and um, it's where she's been for the vast majority of her life. Um, and I would recommend that that placement continue. Okay. Um, well, looking at all this, and since we've got the intervening parties at this time, and um, I mean, everybody, I assume, wants to get this set for some kind of final resolution. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, our next review date was going to be July 25th of 2024. Do we want this set prior to that time or do y'all want a setting that far out? I think I'm good with whichever, you know, whatever the other parties want on this. <clears throat> well, um, you are, let us, I, I, you know, Miss Christie's not here. So we don't know what her calendar is, but what I will do is, is I will take the lead on getting with everybody, um, including uh, Miss Caddy, and uh, getting the date set, Your Honor. Okay. All right. That'll work fine. We'll leave that date set as a review just in case something, you know, falls through. But so I will we'll just keep that date on the calendar. So July 25th of 2024 at 9 a.m. And then, um, you know, I would certainly like to see, see it be set, you know, in the next certainly within the next 90 days. Um, so, uh, okay. Then I will continue the department as permanent managing conservator and I will continue uh, Jasmine's current placement. Um, and I'll see everybody back for a final, if not then, July. Thank you, Ron. Okay. You Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. We are here Thank today you. on a review hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. Uh, we're live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record this morning. All right, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Tiffany Brown is my pharmacy specialist. We're present ready, Your Honor. Savannah Kincaid, I've been appointed to represent uh, Ms. Britton. 
I've had no contact with her since I was appointed on this case back in uh, November. Okay. Stacy Zabala on behalf of Gabrielle. All right, then, uh, Ms. Brown, why don't we have news since the court report was filed? Um, since the court report has been filed, nothing's new, nothing has changed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Trout, I apologize. Let me, we did identify a legal risk placement yesterday. We had a um, selection staffing. Uh, we, we have a family that we selected, unfortunately, because it's legal risk. Um, we don't have termination on parents, so we can't move forward. All right, and that's my question. Have we filed a modification? I was just looking. We haven't yet, Your Honor. We we've been talking about it. Um, I just I spoke to Ms. Sessions them a couple weeks ago, and I just talked to Ms. Sessions about it again. Um, I need to. We're I'm waiting on an affidavit, and then we're going to uh, get one filed um, to move forward with this. Okay. Well, yeah, we need to we need to press. Yes, ma'am. And my understanding right now, and Ms. Brown. Um, when was your last contact with mom? In November. Okay. And do you know where she is living right now? I did a finder search. I went to the addresses that were on there. Um, she was not there. I reached out to her mother yesterday over the phone to see if the number that I had for her is good. And she said it is good. Unfortunately, that phone is disconnected. I tried calling her boyfriend, um, emails, um, the same with Willie Walker. I've had several meetings with him that he has not shown up to, and he actually has an active warrant out. Okay. Um, so, Judge, we'll get one filed. We'll just we're gonna have some issues getting them served just because we can't find them now. Um, but we will we will get one filed here shortly as soon as we get everything together. Um. So, so she has she's moved from her prior address. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And briefly, Your Honor, to, if I may. Yeah, I was trying to remember the ages of the other children, or they, it seemed like they would have been school age. Uh, well, we did the finder search. There actually was, um, there was about nine children that came back on her tiers. Um, so she has her children in addition to her boyfriend's children listed on tiers. Um, but it didn't list, the addresses were all kind of clustered together, so I wouldn't be able to tell what school they went to. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Kincaid. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Brown, uh, you and I have, or you and I have exchanged messages in an attempt to get accurate con contact information from Ms. Britton. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. So we're both looking, but neither one of us have had any luck. Yes, correct. Okay, thanks. That that's all I have, Your Honor. I've never had contact with her. I was just appointed in November, so um, we don't know where she is at this point. Okay. All right, and we don't have a good address on Mr. Walker either. There's an address in Lubbock. All right, so I, and I said Walker. It's Richards, right, Mr. Richards? It's Walker. Uh, Willie Roy Walker Richards is what the, the name that I have. Mm -hmm. It looks like she still works at Tyson. That's the only thing that came back the same. So do we know if we've got the right name for the dad? Because I, I have the same thing, Mr. Trout. I have Willie Roy Walker Richards Jr. Yeah, that's how we've got him put in, Your Honor. That's how we have. Do you know different from that, Ms. Brown? No, I, he's always referred to himself as just Walker. I, if I text him and or call him, he'll respond and he'll talk to me. But as far as meeting me face to face, he has been giving me the runaround. Okay. So you're saying he goes by Willie Walker? Yes, sir. Not by Willie. We'll look into that, John. Like I said, we've got him played. We've had him played in this way the whole time. So I had no knowledge that he didn't go by Richards at the, as the last name. But I will check on that. It it now, and I'm just looking at Odyssey, but it looks like maybe Walker Richards are both last names. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's because they have it. Walker Richards, comma Willie Roy Jr. Yeah, and clerk's got it entered, so I don't know. Okay, 
All right, but no change with Gabby. No. Okay. She had a birthday. That's about it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Zavala? Um, Your Honor, as you said, there really has been no change with Gabby. Um, the it, it would be great to get her into a, um, a longer term placement. This this particular placement um, does great with her, um, but they're having to reevaluate every so often as to whether they can continue to do that. Um, but at this time, I've got I've got no concerns about the placement. She said. Okay, well, let's move forward. Um, the goal is permanency of some sort. So, okay. I'll continue department as permanent managing conservator and I'll continue placement. And our next hearing will be June 6th of 2024. Do y'all want to just set that as a final in this? It gives us six months to try to find everybody and serve them. And Yes, ma'am, we can. And judge, if we end up not being able to find them and have to publish, of course, that takes a little longer, but we'll, uh, we'll keep the court apprised on that. All right. Let's just set it for a final June 6th. And judge, okay. just just for the court, I was I'm looking at the um, docket on this one. Uh, petition filed in this case at the very beginning. It looks like through the uh, AG's office, I believe. Yes, and they have his name as Willie Roy Walker Jr. Richards after the junior. So I don't know exactly how his name is written. So I'll go look. We'll we'll look into it and see um, if we can get some. Uh, searches around and see exactly what his name is. Okay. Sounds good. And Ms. Brown, if he responds to you, you might just just ask him. Ask him what, what how, legally, you know, what is his legal name? Hello. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We're here on a review hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. <clears throat> we are live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Alicia Walker is my permanency specialist. Uh, Your Honor, I don't see CASA. Are they in? Um, Alexi, uh, Alexi was here just a second ago, but I guess she yeah, I, I, I got I got my stuff out of order. And <laughs> is Mr. Edgington also? John Edgington should be the CASA worker on this one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I got my paperwork out of order this morning, so we are ready for y'all. <clears throat> Stacy Zavala for uh, Corinthian. All right, and Casa is also present with us this morning. Okay, then what do we have news since our court report was filed? Um, Corinthian is doing really well in his placement. Um, he is such a great kid. He's so intelligent. Um, his placement says that since he has been doing very well recently, managing his behaviors and everything, they believe that he is ready to be in a less restrictive placement. Um, so we are actually going to try and find him a therapeutic foster home that he can go to so he doesn't have to be in an RTC anymore. Um, so hopefully we can find that for him. And I think that would be really good for him to go to. Yeah, that, I mean, that's great for what I wanted to know. Um, from reading the report, it sounds like he's just really made great progress. Yeah, he has. Okay. All right, Ms. Zavala. Um, so I got stuck with Corinthian yesterday. Um, I know that that Casa had identified some some bullying issues. I talked to him about that. He feels like that has gotten much better. Um, but he he does desperately, I think, want to be in a home and not an RTC. Um, the other issue that I spoke with both him and and the case manager about is um, he was set up to do trauma therapy through Covenant in Lubbock, which is a great idea. Um, and I'm all for it, but it's been very sporadic. Um, and it sounds like his last one was January 8th. Um, when he does go, it's it almost seems like it's um, uh, whoever's on call kind of thing. I think he's met with three different people there. Um, they don't, he doesn't think it's bad, um, but 
we're really wondering because it, for as long as he's at Flyers, and, and hopefully he won't have to be there for much, much longer, but they've got now a counselor that comes in every week to do individual counseling with the kids. Um, she's wonderful. She's I've worked with her on other cases. She works with the Children's Home of Lubbock, Amanda Freeman. Um, so they're wondering if he could start with her to get regular weekly therapy. Um, I know sometimes there's an issue about having more than one therapist, but maybe the two areas of therapy are enough different that he could do the trauma uh, when it's available at Covenant, but also be working with Amanda. If we have to pick just one, uh, my personal vote would be consistency and relationship and having Amanda there every week. But that that's kind of what we're what my concern at this point is. Is Ms. Avala, do you know? I mean, is she qualified to address the the trauma? I, I mean, I, I know that that lots and lots and lots of the kids that she works with have experienced trauma. Now, I don't know technically, you know, if they're different areas of therapy, um, but but she's worked with lots of our kids and has been able to really connect well with them. So I I don't know that technical issue, but. I would think that would be a core part of any LPC's education at this point in time. It sure seems to me to be. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Walker, any thoughts on that? I mean, if you can go to the same person every single time, I think that would be better. Um, placement said with the therapist he's currently seeing, like one time they showed up in Lubbock and the therapist was out of town and didn't even let them know. So doesn't seem like they're super consistent. So I would rather him see someone, the same person every time. Okay. Let's see if we can't get him on her schedule. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And Casa. Okay. Yeah. He's doing pretty well where he is. Um, he, uh, the Ginkgo Priestess has improved. He feels like it's improving. He feels like he has a lot more improvement to make. And he questions whether or not he's actually capable of making enough improvement to completely make it go away, but it's better. And he's, so he's happy about that. Um, yeah, as far as the bullying is an occasional thing that they just, every now and then the placement reports that he uh, said, so that's really the only behavior problem they have is when he may sometimes maybe overreacts to bullying, but you know, he's a teenager being bullied, you know, what do you expect? So, um, the, uh, other than that, yeah, I agree that he needs to be, uh, that we need to consider uh, trying to get him into a, less restrictive environment. Um, uh, I think he's ready for that. Um, let's see, what else? As far as the counseling, yeah, I was, I was glad to hear you went in trauma-informed counseling, but I hadn't realized it was un irregular, like you say it, like uh, Stacy says it is, but definitely he needs to be in something very regular. And But I do think it's probably time for him them to start addressing the trauma. He's been suppressing that for a long time. Uh, and at some point he has moved past it. I'm, not, I'm no expert on that. Just that just seems to me from knowing him for a long time. Um, I don't know. Any other questions? No, sir. Um, I think it sounds like everybody's on the same page. We'd like to get him out of the RT environment and get him in a, a therapeutic foster home. Um, I know it's a, I know it's kind of a tall order because he's going to have to probably be the only kiddo in the home, and or at least. I don't know what are what are our parameters going to be there. I mean, if there were older children in the home, would that be a possibility? I think it depends on the home, what the CPA's rules are. Usually, it's just one kid, but I think they allow one or two children in the home. Okay. All right. All right, then let's we'll, we'll do some digging and try to find something for him and and. Uh, Hope that, that will go well, and then, and uh, yeah, let's do try to get him in with the therapist that comes there on a regular basis. So, see if if she's got time to add him to her list. All right, I'll continue the department as permanent managing conservator, and I will continue his placement. And our next review hearing will be July twenty fifth of twenty twenty four. That'll be on a nine o'clock docket. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you on a review hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We're live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. Okay, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. 
Uh, Marissa Herrera is my premises specialist. We're present ready. Bailey Sapien on behalf of Aurora Casada, mom, and uh, my client is present and we're ready. Jay Michelson on behalf of Jesse Casey. He is in custody in plain view. He's not present, but we are ready. Stacey Zabala on behalf of Jazarian. All right. Um, I've, of course, reviewed the court report. Sounds like mom is doing very well. What do we have new? Jazarian is doing well in placement. He's getting all of his needs met. He's developmentally on target. Um, Mr. Casey, I've talked to him over the phone, and he reports that he has my parenting packets that I mailed to him, and he says that he sent them back, but I haven't received them back yet. Um, Aurora has completed, um, or she's made a scheduled appointment for her first counseling session for Tuesday, February 13th, as well as her OSAR assessment will take place on that day. Other than that, there's no other changes. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. And they're getting their first visit tonight to Jazarian and Aurora. All right, great. We've got clean drug screens and... Yes, ma'am. All right. Where's the child placed? He's in Muleshoe with a great aunt. Okay. And his mom's still living... Where's living in? She's in Muleshoe living with her father. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Ms. Sapien? Judge, the only thing I wanted to touch on today was the start of in-person visits, and Ms. Herrera just covered that. So <clears throat> nothing else for me unless Aurora needs to say anything. Ms. Kazada, anything you want to talk about today? Um, No, not that I have. Okay. Well, just from what I've read and everything, it sounds like you really hit the ground running and you're getting getting things done. And, and so just keep up the good work because you're doing great. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ms. Michelson. Um, no questions, Your Honor. Okay. Anything to report today on behalf of uh, you? Nothing to report. I uh, I investigate um, his uh, claim that he sent it back to Ms. Herrera, the packet, um, and hopefully has something to report next time. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ms. Zavala. Um, no questions, but um, I got to meet with Jazarian in person in the family uh, placement home um, a while back. Um, he's precious and, and doing really well. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see mom's progress. And hopefully since both are in mule shoe visitation and working that out will, will be a, a little bit easier. Um, but I, I have no concerns about the placement that he's in. He's thriving um, and glad to see mom working on services. Okay, so um, pivotal questions, Ms. Herrera. Uh, do you believe that it would be a continuing danger to send the child home at this point in time? Yes, ma'am. All right, and and you are working well with mom, so the department's using reasonable efforts to reunify the family, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, then I will continue the department as a temporary managing conservator and continue the child's current placement, find that there would be a continuing or ongoing danger to return the child home as of today, uh, but we are headed in the right direction. The department's using reasonable efforts to reunify the family and um, I will see everybody back on June 4th of 2024 on a nine o'clock docket. That'll be our next review hearing. And then our final is scheduled for August 6th of 2024, also on a nine o'clock docket. So everybody will have those dates. And Judge, if we haven't um, already, I know this was supposed to be a final today and we all agreed to an extension on this. Correct. The new dismissal date would be August 9th of 2024. <clears throat> all right and and thank you for reminding me about that mr Trout. so also uh, i grant that extension find that there's a good cause in uh, extraordinary circumstances mom just being recently released from uh, jail so we want for her to have time to you know try to make this work so i'll see y'all back june 4th yes ma'am we'll get that extension order file order 
Thank you all. Thank you, Judge. We are here today scheduling our final hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. And we also are live streaming. Ms. Taylor is making the record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present ready on it. Katie Hammond for the month of Rudy Reyes, and I'm ready, Judge. T.D. Hammonds for the mother, Martha Martinez, ready judge. Uh, I have not had any contact with Ms. Martinez. Stacey Zavala for Ariel. All right. Mr. Trout, who's your first witness today? Uh, Mel Tucker. How long have you worked for the Department of Family and Protective Services? 11 years, one month, and two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That's um, impressive. <laughs> does the department keep um, regular records in its cases? Yes. And are those records kept in the ordinary course of business? Yes. And are the entries into those records made at or around the time of the events occurred? Yes, sir. And are those entries made by a person with personal knowledge? Yes. Do you have access to those records? Yes, sir. Are you a custodian of records for the department? <clears throat> Yes. And have you had the opportunity to review the records involving the uh, child? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> is the affidavit and investigative reports, are they made, are they part of those records? Yes, sir. And are those filed with the court? Yes, sir. And you have reviewed those documents? Yes, sir. And I ask you those questions. You are not the, um, we're not the original investigator or supervisor on this case. Is that correct? Correct. And you are here today due to the original investigator and the original supervisor no longer working for the department. Yes, sir. And so you'll testify as to the uh, business records. Yes, sir. <clears throat> How did the department become involved um, in the case involved with the child? On February the 3rd, 2023, the department received a report, a priority one report regarding a uh, mother being positive, m mother Martha Martinez being positive on her urinalysis at the birth of, of the child. Okay. Um, and at that time, was there any open cases involving the mother that you're aware of? Not with the department, but I believe there was one open with St. Francis. Okay. So that we were involved in a case involving a child of the mother's. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Ms. Tucker, let me clarify. What was she positive for? Oh, sorry. Methamphetamines. Okay. Thank you. And was the worker able to get to the hospital? Yes. Did she work meet with the mother and the father? Yes, she did. And who was the alleged father of the baby? Rudy Reyes. Okay. Um, did, was the worker able to, or the investigator, able to um, view the child? Yes. And where was the child at the time? They had moved the child to the nursery. Okay. Were there any orders as far as uh, nursery or being in the room with the parents that you know? The doctors had ordered that the child be placed in the nursery Okay. for safety reasons. Okay. Um, did, did, mom, did mom, when confronted about drug screening um, before birth, did she acknowledge that she knew she'd be positive? Uh, she said that so she was smoking a vape and had put meth in it, some old meth that she found. Okay. And that's why she was positive. <clears throat> okay. Um, did mom admit um, ongoing drug use at the time? Not to the worker. Okay. Just that it happened a couple of times? Yes. Okay. Um, was the dad cooperative during the investigation at the hospital? No, he was not. Okay. Um, did he make any statements as far as um, being cooperative with the department? No, he had asked Martha not to say anything further. Uh, he said they're going to remove our child and anything you say will be used against us. Um, did dad also have some prior history with the department? I'm not sure. Um, Your Honor, I would ask to admit um, exhibits number one and number two. Um, exhibit number one is 
a certified copy of a order of termination involving the mom and the dad. Um, this case happened um, about six months prior to the case involving Ariel. Is a termination order um, for a thing terminating the rights of Martha Martinez and Ruby Reyes. No okay. objection, Judge. No objection. No objection, Judge. All right. I will also take notice that uh, the grounds for termination in that exhibit, uh, here at least, let's see, uh, mom was D, E, N, and O. Um, and on the father, D, E, N, and O. Okay, petitioner's exhibit one will be admitted and then you also offer two. Two, your honor, and exhibit two is a certified copy of um, final order affecting the rights and order of termination as far as on the child. Tom's right. mother in that case was also Martha Martinez. And this case actually happened um, within a day or two of us getting involved in the current case. No objection, judge. No objection. No objection, Judge. Okay. Um, Petitioner Exhibit 2 will be admitted. Same thing. Grounds for termination in that case for the DE in and of. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mel, during um, <clears throat> the investigation, did mom and dad leave the hospital room? Yes, they. Um, when the worker was trying to visit with them about the case and the allegations, uh, they did get up to leave the hospital. Uh, mom still had the IV in her arm and she stayed long enough for the nurse to take the IV out and then they left. Um, did the department request um, removal of the child based upon positive drug screens and um, prior history with the parents as far as current terminations going on? Yes, sir. Is that for the safety of the child and in the best interest? Yes, sir. Um, do you know where the child the child was placed at that time, or who it was placed with? No, no, sir. I don't. I know that there was some family members that came forward for okay. possible placement, and they were doing a home study, but I don't know the results of the home study. So, and you do believe it was in the best interest of the child to remove? Yes, sir. And. <clears throat> Were um, did the investigator on the case were they able to meet up with mom and dad after the removal to go over everything? Um, there was some phone call phone conversations between the worker and Miss Martinez, but I do not believe that she was able to meet with her at any time. Um, I'll pass the witness here. All right, Mr. Hammonds. Ms. Tucker, in reviewing the business records, does the caseworker that's been assigned to this case, does she indicate she's been in contact with Martha Martinez since leaving the hospital? She had talked to her on the phone about meeting up, but at the then Martha told her that she was having car problems. The worker offered to meet with her uh, wherever she was at. And she did, she would not give a locating address. So, um, I don't I mean, know over the last they six, ever met up. Yeah, over the last six eight, she has seen Martha oh, face to face. Hang on a minute. Ms. Taylor, are you getting this? Okay, Mr. Hammond's back up. You and Ms. Tucker were talking over each other. In I read that she had, oh, go ahead. In the last six to nine months, is there anything to indicate the caseworker has seen her face to face? No, sir. Nothing further, Judge. All right, Mr. Novak. No questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, and Ms. Zavala. No questions, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Crowder, anything further of this witness? Judge, if I could back up for half a second, I apologize for that. No, no go ahead. Uh, Mel 
When's the last time you talked to Rudy? Miss Tucker? When was the last time they talked? I, I have no idea the last time they talked to Rudy. No, when's the last time you talked to Rudy? I haven't, I haven't talked to Rudy. Is it fair to say that Rudy I'll, had not participated in these proceedings? As far as I know. Has he worked any services as far as you know? That would be uh, St. Francis. Understood. Um, Understood. Yeah. Mel, thank you so much. Judge, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I have no right. questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> so, no further questions? Sorry, yes, ma'am. We got a delay somewhere. Yes, ma'am. I have no further questions for Mel at this time, Your Honor. All right. Anybody else have anything for Ms. Tucker? No. Because, you know, she's got okay. her She's got her finger on the button already. <laughs> She's fast. Get, a, get off a of Zoom, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. You're free to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Bye. Okay. You can call your next witness. I call Tori Cook, Your Honor. And how are you familiar with that case? Um, I was assigned the case when it came from CPS. What does what are your first steps um when you are assigned a case? Um, to get in contact with the parents, um, set up our first meeting with them and get them involved with the service plan. Okay. And were you able to get in touch with parents on this case? I was. At the beginning? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> were you able to set up meetings with them or did you go see them at their home? Where did y'all meet? Um, we met at the St. Francis office. Okay. And did you uh, set up service plan, family plans of service for the parents? I did. And tell us what family plans of service are. Uh, what they are, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so family plan of service um, talks about the child, talks about our needs, um, and then sets up services for the parents to work to reunify with their child. And were they were set up in this case? Yes. Um, were you able to go over family plans of service with the parents? I was. And did they sign them? They did sign your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibits number three and four. Uh, they are certified copies of the family plans of service. Um, exhibit number three is the service plan for Martha Martinez, and exhibit number four is the family plans of service for Rudy Reyes that were filed with the court. No objection, Judge. No objection. No objection. No objection, Judge. And Ms. Cook, um, you, you did say that they both signed them, correct? Yes, they did. All right. Okay. Petitioners exhibits three and four will be admitted. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Cook, what type of services would the parents have been asked to do? Um, they were asked to have housing stability, employment stability, um, keep in contact with me, um, also do an OSAR assessment, um, some parenting courses, um, depending on the OSAR, any recommendations following that, uh, okay. drug screens, individual counseling, um, psychosocial assessment for Martha Martinez, a psychological assessment. And I believe that about wraps it up. I did, think we were looking for inpatient for both of them after the OSAR. Okay. Did, um, did either parent work any services? No, sir. Did they ever attempt to work any services? I believe Rudy did set up his parenting courses, um, but on the initial um, meeting never showed. Okay. Um, did mom ever attempt to do anything? No, sir. Um, so neither one of them ever did OSAR? No, sir. Rudy set up but never completed, and Martha never even set up parenting classes? Correct. Um, psychosocial? No, sir. Um, did they drug screen for you? They drug screened once for me, yes. Okay. Um, but never drug screened again? No, sir. Were those all presumed positives? Yes. Um, when was the last contact you had with parents? Um, the last contact was actually the court hearing that we had in August. Okay. So it's been about six months since you've seen or heard from them. Yes, sir. Um, and in that hearing, did parents show up to that hearing? They did. Okay. So they have appeared to one hearing. So they did were well aware of this. Yes. And they were served on this case. Yes. <clears throat> Um, have the parents, child's been in care for 
over six months. Yes. Um, have the parents seen the child? Um, they did. They had a couple of visitations in March of 2023. Okay. Um, but since then, they have not seen the child? No, sir. They have, have they reached out to you to try to, to try to set up any type of visitations? No, sir. Um, did the department give reasonable efforts um, by Family Plans of Service and uh, to be allowing to work with the parents, drug screens, in order to allow them visitations with the child? Yes, sir. And the ability to possibly reunite with the child? Yes, sir. And did parents ever avail themselves of those opportunities? They did not. Um, do you believe that the, do you know where the parents live now? No, last I heard was in the August court date that they were homeless um, and neither address that I've been to, they, they haven't been there. Do you believe that either one of the parents could provide um, stability and give give the child um, adequate means for living? I do not. Um, was a certificate of paternity registry search run in this case? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit um, exhibit number one, or excuse me, exhibit number five, which is a certified copy of the certificate of paternity registry search showing that no one has in, um, given notice of intent to claim paternity. No objection, Judge. No objection. No objection. <clears throat> All right, petitioners exhibit five will be admitted. Um, let me just, I want to just clear something on the record real quickly. Mr. Trout, um, you'd asked her a question about they appeared at, at one hearing. I Parents actually appeared for the adversary hearing. They appeared for the status hearing, and they actually appeared for the initial permanency hearing. And then after that, they had not appeared. So I just I just wanted the record to reflect that they did they did appear on three different occasions. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> um, Ms. Cook, today is the department St. Francis asking for termination of the um, parental rights of Martha Martinez um, based upon prior terminations, um, based upon constructive abandonment, failure to work services, um, and d &E grounds of um, putting the child in the mm -hmm. way. Yes, sir. Due to the positive drug screens when she was born. Yes, sir. Um, and do you believe that's in the best interest of the child? I do. And is the department also asking for termination of the parental rights of Rudy Reyes, um, one, based upon failed register with the paternity registry, um, two, if he's adjudicated today based upon um, the grounds of constructive abandonment, prior terminations, and um, failure to work services. Yes, sir. And do you believe that is in the best interest of the child? I do. Where is the child placed right now? Child is placed in a foster home. And is the child placed with any family? Um, child is placed with an older sibling, blood sibling. And that is a full biological sibling? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, how's the child doing? Um, Ariel is doing amazing. Um, mm -hmm. She is almost as big a sister, actually. She's growing well. She's trying to walk. She's eating, sleeping, um, definitely on target developmentally. Um, she's she's doing very well, very well. And placement that has her, they adopted the bio sister. Yes. Sir. Are they planning to adopt uh, Ariel? Yes, sir. Um, are they they set up to do that? Just waiting on the ability to adopt. Yes. And you believe that that would also be in the best interest of the child? I do. I'll pass the question. All right, Mr. Hammonds. Ms. Cook, after that uh, initial permanency hearing back in August of 2023, have you had any phone contact or face-to-face -face contact with Martha Martinez? I have not. Are you aware of her trying to contact anybody else in your office? I am not. I have nothing further, Judge. Okay, Mr. Novak. Thank you so much, Judge. Just briefly, um, Tori, thanks for the phone call yesterday. Yeah. Um, best of your memory, when's the last time you talked to Rudy? Um, probably April of 2023. 
Has Rudy actively tried to work any services? No. Okay. Has he tried to reach out to you and contact you? He has not. You know, I, I think Daniel already asked you this, but this is a final hearing. Do you think it's in the, this child's best interest to terminate the rights? I do. Pass the witness, Judge. Thank you so much. All right. And Ms. Zavala? I have no questions, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further, Your Honor. And we have no other witnesses we address. Okay. All right, Mr. Hammonds, any witnesses to call no today? No questions of this witness, Judge, and I have no witnesses to call. I rest. All right, and Mr. Novak? Rest and close, Judge. Okay. All right, and Ms. Zavala? I'll also rest and close. All right, and do you have a recommendation to make? Yes, Your Honor. Um, it is my recommendation um, that it would be in the best interest of Ariel for the parental rights to be terminated on both parents at this time. Um, she is doing <clears throat> extraordinarily well where she is bonded with her sister, and um, and I recommend that that continue until adoption can be done. All right, thank you. All right, at this time, then, I do find by clear and convincing evidence it is in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the child and her mother, Martha Martinez, based on the Texas Family Code, Section 161-001-B1, the D, E, M, N, and O grounds, and best interest under 161-001-B2. At this time, I will adjudicate Father uh, Rudy Reyes as the father and will establish the parent-child relationship between Mr. Reyes and the child. Uh, I find by clear and convincing evidence it's in the best interest to terminate the parental rights between the child and Rudy Reyes based on Texas Family Code 161-001-B1-D-E-M-N-O grounds and the best interest under 161-001-B2. Uh, I'll also uh, terminate Mr. Reyes's rights under 161 b 3 his failure to register with the paternity registry. I'll name the Department of Family and Protective Services as permanent managing conservator of the child. And at this time, I'll dismiss all court-appointed attorneys after the appropriate de novo and appellate timeframes expire, uh, except for Ms. Zavala, who will remain as the child's attorney and guardian ad litem. Council, as always, uh, be mindful your de novo time frame does begin to run since I have rendered it open to court. And uh, please do not file a notice of appeal if you're instructed to do so until a final order has been signed and adopted by the referring court. All right. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you all very much. Um, <clears throat> hope you all have a good rest of your day. Um, I'll see a few of you back uh, at one o'clock. So everybody else. Have a good one. All right. Um, I do not have Mr. Engelbert logged in or in the waiting room. Has anybody had any contact with him? I have not, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. Did he ever send his uh, paperwork in for an attorney? Do you have Miss Lippy in there? I do not. Brian, do you know if Mr. Engelbert sent anything in? Uh, he did not. Um, I think Mr. Engelbert is in, or he told Jessica that he was in the hospital um, and he didn't know which hospital that he was at. So Jessica told him to, uh, you know, ring the the uh, the red button on the remote to see, to talk to a nurse to see what hospital. And he said that, no, um, no, there was a library that he was, that he was near and he just never um, got it back to us. All right. Uh, let me just ask Mr. Alley, do you need, do you, attorneys, do, they, do you all need to visit? Or? Probably just to confirm, Judge, um, we, I believe we had an agreement at our last hearing between the attorneys. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Yeah. Um, Bert, we are here for uh, adversary hearing. This is a reset uh, which was requested by Mr. Engelbert so that he could apply for an attorney. Mr. Engelbert uh, has not submitted any of that paperwork, nor is he present today. So we will be proceeding um, <clears throat> today, and we are conducting this through Zoom. We are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor's making our record. 
All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Your Honor, the uh, Miss Hiltz, the mother of the child, um, has agreed to work services and for the department. The department will, on her behalf, will remain as temporary managing conservator of the child. And we would begin trying to be, uh, do an ICPC home study on the home that she lives in in Colorado. Um, uh, working towards a reunification plan. Uh, I, we have not had contact with Mr. Engelbert. Um, we don't believe that Mr. Engelbert's the father, um, and I would put on some testimony as to why it would not be in the best interest of this child to return this child to him. <clears throat> okay. Savannah Kincaid, I represent Ms. Hiltz. We're present and ready. Haley Sapien on behalf of the child. All right. Thank you. No, you're with us. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Alvey, then you can call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Ms. Jessica Lippe. Um, When did you begin your investigation concerning this child? November 30th of 2023. And at that point in time, uh, was the child in the care of a non-parent? Yes, he was. And did you reach out and attempt to find the parents to the child? Yes. And were you able to talk to Mr. Dustin, excuse me, Mr. Eric Engelbert? Yes. And uh, where was Mr. Engelbert when you found him? He was in Colorado. Um, and since November, have you had several conversations with Mr. Engelbert? Yes. And during that time, has he ever been able to provide you with a stable residence that he resides at? No. Where is he currently, or the last time that you talked to him, where is he? As of Monday, he was hospitalized in Houston, Texas. Did he provide you with the name of the hospital that he was in? No. Did he provide you with what he believed was wrong, why he was in a hospital? Yes. What was his reasoning? He had COVID. And and he's actually told you that he's had COVID several times between now and November. This is correct. Um, have you had an opportunity since November to, well, first of all, in January, the non-parent parties who had the child in their possession um, were unable to keep the child. Is that correct? Yes. And so they brought the child and put the child in your possession. Yes. And, and, and part of that was because they couldn't get Mr. Engelbert or Ms. Hiltz to uh, sign paperwork to give them permission to get insurance, those kind of things for this child. Yes, that is correct. Did you find Ms. Hiltz um, eventually? Yes, I did. And have you had conversations with her? Yes. And is she currently, well, she's living in Colorado. Where in Colorado is she currently living? It's Pueblo or Colorado Springs. I'm not sure which one right now. And um, have you advised her that we would begin an ICPC home study for her? She did discuss of the desire of having him placed with a, a friend in Colorado. So I did explain that's a process. But we haven't begun the process of trying to get that home study at this point in time. Correct. It's not been started. And usually we would wait until after the adversary hearing um, to begin that process. Yes. And usually that is a St. Francis Ministries Primacy Specialist who begins that process. Yes. Have you also discussed some of the possible services that Ms. Hiltz may be asked to work? She is aware of some of those services. Okay. Um, right now, do you believe it would be a danger to return Dustin to either Mr. Engelbert or to Brenda Hiltz? Yes. In your conversations with Ms. Hiltz, did she advise you that there was, that Eric Engelbert is actually not the father to Dustin? He did. And she, did she advise you that the actual father was a man by the name of Chris who lives in Oklahoma City? 
She did advise of the first name. I don't recall if she gave me his location. Are you therefore today, let me strike that and start over. Do you, today, do you believe that it would be unsafe to return Dustin? Okay, I'm back. I'm not sure, Amy, where I was at when I froze. You started out, and therefore today, let me strike. Let me strike that and start over. Today, do you believe that it would be unsafe? And then you stopped. You froze. Thank you. And I don't see Jessica. There she is. Jessica, can you hear me? I don't know if it was the Wi-Fi here at the office or what happened. Well, mine, mine did the same thing. So okay. I'll, I'll start over. Do you feel today that it would be a continuing danger to Dustin to be returned to either parent? Yes. And um, are you also requesting that we do a DNA test on Eric Engelbert to determine if he is actually the biological father of this child? Yes. And that Miss Hiltz be um, ordered to work some services and that we and an ICPC home study be ordered? Yes. You believe all that's in the Dustin's best interest? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Sean. Um, let me ask a quick question. Uh, Ms. Lee, did she name the, the man that she said it was in Oklahoma, Chris? Did she give a last name? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, we'll get around to asking her if she can tell us that. So, okay. Uh, Ms. Kincaid, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, based on your investigation, are you aware who put the child in the possession of the non parents? From what I've been told, Eric and Brenda. Okay. Um, <clears throat> are you aware? Um, are you aware that Brenda was trespassed from the home where the child was residing? I haven't seen a trespass okay. order. Okay. So, <clears throat> as far as you know, both of them left the child in possession of uh, the non parents. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass with this. All right. And Miss Sapien? No questions, Judge. All right. Anything further to this witness, Mr. Alvey? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. You can call your next witness. I'll rest, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Kincaid? Uh, do you want me to call Ms. Hiltz to ask her about uh, the father? That, yeah, that would be great. Uh, then I'll call Ms. Hiltz. Ms. Hiltz, please. are you uh, the mother of the child, the subject of this suit? Yes, I okay. am. And there was something in, uh, that you wanted to express and, and make clear is that you don't feel like you were the one that left the child with no. your parents. Okay. Yes, I and, am. Yeah. You, you feel yeah. like it was Mr. Engelbert who left the child in possession of the non-parents. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. Okay. They kicked me out. Okay. Hang on. After the baby. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. Ms. Hills, you can't talk over her. Okay. The court reporter can't not take both people at the same time. So wait till she's finished before okay. you're talking. Okay. Now, the other thing is that you um, are requesting a home study on some folks in Colorado. Can you give their first and last names, please? J A N N E L L Y E. No, it's J A N E L L Y E. Yeah, but that's. Ms. Hiltz, Ms. Hiltz, please just say their first and last names. Janelle Denny. Okay. And who is Martinez? I know Jen Janelle for 20 years. Okay. Ms. Hiltz, just the name of it's Janelle. And then Denny. who is the other person? Michael Martinez. Okay. Michael Martinez. Okay. And you can you provide their address? Don't say it now, but can you provide their address to the worker who contacts you so they can begin their home study? Yes. Okay. The next thing is, have you given the name Chris as the father of this child? Yeah, and I told Jessica I could I don't have his number anymore because it got deleted out of my phone. Okay. Do you know his last name? No, I just know him by Chris. Okay. And do you know where he lives? In Oklahoma City. Okay. I don't know the address. Okay. Do you have him on Facebook or any other social media? Nope. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass witness, Your Honor. 
Do you know any of his family, ma'am? No, I just know him. I never got to meet his family. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, Mr. Alley, do you have any questions? I do not. Not at this time, Your Honor. Okay. All right. And Ms. Sapien? Thank you, Judge. Just one. Uh, Ms. Hiltz, do you currently live with Janelle Denny and Michael Martinez? Yes, I do right now, but I'm trying to find other places. You're froze. No other questions. All right. Uh, Ms. Kincaid, anything further? No, you're on arrest. All right. Ms. Sapien, anything to present today? Uh, I don't have any witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Do you have a recommendation to make? I do, Your Honor. My recommendation is that the child's current placement continue and that the department um, remain temporary managing conservator of the child. And I am not opposed to the home study requested. All right. Thank you, ma'am. And Casa. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Casa has had contact with dad uh, or the alleged father. Um, he did tell her that he was living in Houston but would be moving again. Um, the child is doing well in, in the placement. Um, he was having some trouble with spitting up, so the doctor's kind of cutting back on his um, how often he eats. So, But otherwise, he's doing really good. Did Mr. Engelbert indicate where he was going to move to? He did not. He said that he would not give an address because he would be moving soon. And he he was he he also told her that he was um, going to be getting the child after this hearing. Um. So and um, Carla tried to explain to him that's not the way it works, but but he would not give any addresses. Okay. All right, um, then at this time, I will find the evidence is sufficient to name the Department of Family and Protective Services as the temporary managing conservator. Um, I will find that there will be a continuing and ongoing danger to the child to return the child uh, to either parent's home at this time. Uh, I find that reasonable efforts were made by the department to avoid the removal of the child uh, and uh, would expect, of course, the department will continue to use re reasonable efforts to reunify the family. Uh, well, I will expect parents, that obviously, to work some services. We'll talk more about that at our next well, hearing. Hilts, they they probably will be discussing those with you between now and the next hearing, and you can certainly get started on those. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll approve I'll, the request. Hang on, Ms. Hiltz, just a minute. Okay. I'll approve the request for the ICPC home study and um, order the genetic testing has been requested on Mr. Engelbert and the child. And um, I think that's it. Anything further, Mr. Allen? Thank you. Covered it, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Our next hearing will be on February 28th. So not very far away. And um, I'll see everybody back then until we'll talk more about service plans. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Y'all have a nice rest of your day.